I'm Wendy Sweet. And I'm Bill Fairman. We are so glad to have you back with us today. We are going to talk about, gosh, the largest transfer of money is about to happen, right? Well, From, or wealth. Yeah, yeah, well. Doesn't necessarily mean money. That's could true. Be solid asset. It could be real estate, right? It's gonna, it's gonna go from the baby boomer generation, which you and I qualify for, and it's going uh, to the uh, millennial market. And, and it's really interesting, some of the opportunities that are gonna be out there for the millennials. You know, they've talked, they talk so much about how in debt they all are from college loans, school loans, you know, in our in our area in Charlotte, we have one of the largest concentration of millennials here, and their median income is is huge sure. for people that age. And they they don't always buy houses. They they like to stay in apartment complexes still, so that they can get up and go. They like the tiny house thing. They like the experience of life and and experience. That's what they really spend their money on. Is more like experiences where. The baby boomers tended to invest in things, whether it's collectibles or, you know, cars or or gold and silver or real estate or whatever that might be. So it's interesting to, to see what's kind of coming down the pike. Well, I mean, we have a whole generation of people that are used to living as a uh, minimalist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them saw their parents, not necessarily their grandparents, uh, or other friends' parents mm -hmm. that owned homes, went through the crash, ended up having their homes foreclosed on, and they don't have anything to do with them. Yeah, houses. a true black swan <laughs> event, no doubt. You know, the things that happened in the in the crash had a lot to do with speculation mm -hmm. the people that bought homes that didn't really care that much for the home right but they knew that if they held on to it for a certain period of time they could sell it make a quick profit on mm -hmm. it. so they were struggling to make those payments because there's a little more than they can afford house rich yep house rich and cash poor mm -hmm. and it really wasn't uh, designed to their lifestyle or taste right so they didn't really have their heart in it mm. and then when the values went down it was really easy for them to walk away right w one of the things i always teach people in our real estate groups is that if you have income producing property the house and here's my saying the house doesn't care how much it's worth that's right <laughs> <laughs> because the house isn't based on its sales price. Right. It's based on how much income it can earn. Right. One of the things that, and it's a shame because the vast majority of millennials are waiting much longer to own homes if they, if they want to own them at all. But we know uh, many investors who started off as very young people, mm-hmm bought a duplex mm -hmm. one side to live in for themselves yeah. and then they rented out the other side for them to have their entire mortgage paid for. Right. So they're living over here for free. That's right. Or at a very discounted am amount mm -hmm. while the other person took care of that mortgage for them. That's a good way and to then work. later, and this, this is what always happens through life. Your income starts to go up. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you, find a spouse, end up getting married. You mm -hmm. need more space, right? You've got equity in that home. You typically sell that home. You take that equity and then you move it to the next home right? and you just keep getting bigger. Well, what if instead of taking that equity and selling that home, taking that equity and moving, you refinance that house, mm -hmm. take that equity and use it on a down payment for a new house. That's the way to do and it. And now you rent out the other side and now you've got income. Right. Right. You're, you're cash flowing because you're making more and than that payment. Next house you buy again, you never sell that one. You just buy the next one. Right. And we know people that have 40 to 60 doors. And a lot of that was started by being very young and just continuing to buy that next home, but never selling the old home. Right. And keeping it as, as rental property. Right. Well, what's going to happen though, when 
these millennials are getting that big cash transfer or wealth transfer from their, their parents. It's kind of like winning the lotteries. And a friend was telling us a, that he was just looking at a story about the last 10 lottery winners and where are they five years later? Well, they're, they're back on welfare, food stamps, and <laughs> whatever yeah. it takes that, that they're just not taking care of the money they get. So what's going to happen when they get this transfer of wealth? What, what, what are they supposed to do? Well, the first thing that I would do is get a posse. <laughs> get four or five people that just walk around saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> and you have to pay, pay for stuff for them. That's right. <laughs> what would be your other option? <laughs> uh, first and foremost, it depends on the type of wealth that's being transferred. Mm -hmm. If it's a, if it's a solid asset, if it's stocks, it's bonds, just make sure you find a good money manager that you currently have it. Maybe it's the person that's currently holding the account or managing the account. Right. Right. Talk to them about different, different options. Find I, someone else who is wealthy and take yeah, good and, care and of I, it. It's funny. I noticed the difference when younger people go to a wealth manager and they mm. go to these offices where there's mahogany and on the walls and marble on the floor. That's right. All these expensive. Somebody places. paid for that, right? And they're like, <laughs> I'm paying these fees so you can make your office opulent. Right. Do you really need this? Right. And, and that turns a lot of people That's off. That's right. But you don't want to go to somebody who's operating out of a trailer either, right? <laughs> There are funds that you can get into that are real estate related mm. that, you know, the, the fees are pretty low. It's stuff you understand if you, if you've had a mortgage yourself or know someone who has, mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand that real estate is always going to go up. It's not always going to go up in a straight line. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> People need two things in any economy, mm -hmm. right? They need a roof over their head and they need food. That's right. So if you're going to invest in my opinion, and this is something that Warren Buffett talks about, you invest in something that you know, and you use. Right. So most of what Warren Buffett invests in are housing because mm -hmm. he owns, he owns mobile homes. He's got that Berkshire Hathaway real estate. Mm -hmm. He's got another real estate company. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's a high dollar one. <laughs> uh, he owns, you know, the mobile homes. Yeah. He also finances those mobile homes. So he's in food because he is invested in all, all your big name brands, right. Procter and Gamble, all right. those and, and housing. Yeah. So, notes. He does notes. And yeah. so he's been very successful yeah. and he's done it over time. It's not, you know, a get rich quick thing. And, and that's what you need to think about when you're investing this money and don't go out and start buying a bunch of crap right. that you don't need. <laughs> you want to take it. It's okay to that charger. It, it's okay to uh, <laughs> reward yourself. Yeah. But you need to Eat take a brownie. The, you, need to, <laughs> you need to take the majority Chocolate of that cookie. money and continue to keep it invested All right. because uh, over time, number one, you're going to need it. Now, most, most financial advisors teach you that there's a particular number you need mm -hmm. to retire mm -hmm. and your job is not to die before you run out of money. Right. Once you retire, right. right? You're you going to get to a certain, be. certain income level that you can live off of the money that that number has. Right. And your job is not to die before it finishes. Right. <laughs> but, uh, as you know, we're all living a lot longer. That's right. So how long is enough? Right. My suggestion is to find something that pays you an income and never touches the balance. Right. And allows that income to continue to go up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anything other than real estate right. that you can do that on a consistent passive uh, income, notes, basis. seller financing, all right. of that. Right. So as a young person, especially if you're not an accredited investor, that means a million dollars and net worth or greater, not counting your primary residence mm -hmm. is uh, there are smaller funds that are called 
A regulation funds, we call them Reg A plus. So they're Regulation A plus. They are not quite as stringent as publicly traded stock, but they have almost as many regulations mm -hmm. involved. But you can invest small amounts of money, five, ten thousand, and still be in the same real estate spaces right, that, right. that we're in. There's uh, plenty of companies out there that will that have an example uh, through crowdfunding where they're making a loan on a piece of property. They open up that loan to other investors to put money in right. and you can invest as little as, you know, five, $10,000 at a time. Right. So there's, there's plenty out there. I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to bigger pockets. Yes, absolutely. They're an online forum. It's education only. And there's plenty of people there that can help you figure out places to put money yeah. and strategies. Again, mm -hmm. no one, no one's selling anything on there. It's strictly education. Yeah. Good information. Get a good mentor mm -hmm. as well. One of the posse has to know what they're doing. <laughs> and uh, it's, like I said, it's okay to splurge now and again. I know you, I know you guys like to do experiences. Yeah. But you don't have to experience Bali. You can experience the Bally Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to. <laughs> That's right. It took <laughs> it it took the people that passed down that wealth mm -hmm. a lifetime to make it. That's right. You're not going unless it's um, unless, listen, unless it's millions and millions of dollars. Well, treat then, it you the can lose it. treat it the same way your Parents. person that, that yeah. passed it down to you. Mm -hmm. There's an unknown, well, not, not unknown. <laughs> it's a lesser known statistic that by the fourth generation, <laughs> most of your wealthiest families in the country are completely. Broke. That's right. That's right. Well, only one of the Rockefellers still has wealth in the family. Oh, Did you know that? No. Yeah. So, Learned that tidbit yesterday. Oh, good for you. I'm just picking them up everywhere. <laughs> but there's plenty of strategies <laughs> to continue to build wealth That's right. over time through through families and keep the wealth and continue to grow well. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into one later. Uh, we'll have a, a friend of ours that's in the whole life cash value policy business. Oh, yeah. and we'll have yeah. him on the show. Chris Miles, right? Yep. Yeah. And he'll he'll talk about how the family offices, the Rockefellers continued to build that wealth over mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. by utilizing the whole life uh, insurance, cash value yeah. insurance policy mm -hmm. uh, to continue that. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of people that are, have had wealth passed down to them over time. It had been very productive mm -hmm. and helped grow it. But typically you always have a ne'er-do-well thrown yeah. in there too that'll <laughs> end up just, you know, sucking off part of that well right. never to be seen again <laughs> i'll open up a cbd oil branch that's right <laughs> but anyway i hope that was helpful keep your eye on it anyway <laughs> don't flaunt the wealth uh utilize it to invest in get a good mentor is it that lottery house i yeah. won the lottery and yeah. now i'm gonna find my million dollars yeah i knew you'd watch I that i didn't watch it i just <laughs> seen the commercials for it well, I knew what you're talking about. So that shows I've seen it too. So, yeah. All right. So anyway, enjoyed having you here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and information about us on our website, carolinahardmoney.com. Investor tab for those who want to invest and apply now for those who would, who would like, like to, to apply now. Buy. That's right. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, look forward to seeing you. You might want to, in case we have some other shows, you can click them on here too. They might be around our perimeter. That's We're not sure, but check it out. Or like little drones. That's right. <laughs> Dropping tidbits of information. Have a great so time. thank you so much for joining us. If you really like what you heard, you want to see some more, switch over here or <laughs> here or perhaps there. There's more episodes but they're somewhere. Yeah. I think Click they're, it on. They're up. By the way, subscribe and like us as well. Please. <laughs>